This is a SI4732 radio. As the name would suggest, it's built around an SI4732 chip, which is basically a, an entire radio on a chip. Um, it's sold without any manufacturer's branding. This one certainly is anyway, and most of them don't have any branding. They're commonly available on eBay, AliExpress and Amazon. They retail for between 38 up to 70 UK pounds, although I really wouldn't pay 70 pounds for one of these. That equates to about 56 to 92 dollars. As I say, most are unbranded, like this one. I have seen some with a, an ATS-20 branding, but it's basically the same radio. So, there it is. The radio covers VHF FM broadcast band. It covers long wave, it covers medium wave, and it covers short wave. And it also has an SSB facility, so you can listen to radio amateurs and other commercial traffic. As you can see, it's got a small OLED screen here, which gives us a frequency readout. It gives us a mode AGC status, the bandwidth we're using, in this case, uh, 3 kilohertz. The 12 there signifies the volume level. We have a small uh, rudimentary S meter here, and we have um, the step size for the VFO knob, it's a step size of 5 kilohertz at the moment. This radio has had its firmware upgraded, so if you buy one of these, your display will look slightly different from this. And I'll show you um, a quick picture of the uh, the standard display. Um, the radio is driven by an Arduino board, so it is upgradable. And if you want to know more about that, there's some other videos on my channel about that. But I'm going to confine my review to the radio as is, uh, just at the moment. Now, the uh, radio is powered by um, a rechargeable battery, uh, which is charged via the USB connector at the rear. It's got very good battery life, so it's very handy for, uh, for portable use. Let's have a look at the, uh, the front panel. You see we've got the screen to the left, and then we've got eight little buttons which control the band switching, band up and band down volume up and volume down we have the step button which adjusts the VFO step we have a bandwidth button which allows us to select the bandwidth we wish to use in whatever mode we're in we've got an AGC button which also switches in an attenuator and we've got a mode button to switch between AM upper side band and lower side band for the amateur radio bands if we go around to the rear of the radio this one has a, a mini USB connector here and that's how we power the radio. We've got a little micro switch to switch the radio off and on. We've got an LED uh, which lights up to show that the radio is on charge when we've got the USB plugged in. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack. We've got a BNC connector with a telescopic antenna. The antenna comes with the radio, it's the only thing that does. But obviously you can use the BNC uh, to connect an external antenna. We'll just take this telescopic off. And we've got another little micro switch which switches this antenna socket. Um, if we switch it to FM, then it activates it on the VHF band. If we switch it to AM, that activates it from long wave up to the top end of the HF band. So it's pretty simple stuff. Um, some of the receivers have a micro USB, like this ATS-20 I showed you earlier, rather than the mini. You can see it's got the micro here. It's got quite a different Arduino board in it. And if you are interested in experimenting with these radios, personally, because I've had a lot of issues trying to, trying to update this radio, I would go with one of these with the, with the mini, which is, seems to be a bit easier. I don't know why, but it is. Um, the performance is very acceptable on the telescopic that comes with the radio. It works very well and you're even able to receive some stronger long and medium wave stations with the, just the telescopic. There's no internal ferrite rod for this. 
So for medium wave or long wave, you're gonna need an antenna. Um, but it does actually work quite well. And it works reasonably well on an external antenna as well. And we'll see this in a moment. But these receivers, for what they are, they're quite cheap. The audio quality isn't bad either. You've got the speaker on the top panel here. Quality control is variable to say the least. Um, people have had issues with the encoder wheel here. Uh, this one's working okay at the moment, but uh, some people have had issues where the encoder skips steps or just stops working altogether. Um, the internal soldering, the quality of that is variable, and I had an issue with that radio, and I, I had to go inside and um, desolder uh, one of the pins inside that had been soldered incorrectly because it was stopping the radio from working properly. Um, some people have had no issues, but whether these radios are built to last or not is another matter. They are cheap, and I think the quality of a lot of the components is, is likewise. Um, so that's just a little warning. If you want to experiment with a radio, and if you want to learn a little bit about Arduinos as well, these have a place because uh, there's a lot you can do to change some of the functions of these buttons change the readout and to some extent change the performance of this radio. Let's have a look at it in the shack. Okay here we are on 80 meters, we've just about got a, an Echo India station there in the background there. Conditions aren't brilliant at the moment. We're on an external antenna. I'll just team, I'm on a one kilohertz step here, see if we can find any other stations on 80. One of the criticisms of this receiver, as you'll hear, is as you turn the uh, VFO, you've got this chuffing noise. It's just... Okay, so we're on 3755 there. We've got a couple of UK stations coming in on 80. So you'll see that the single sideband uh, works okay. We can turn the volume up. As I say, when you buy one of these, well, I don't know the facilities will be slightly different from standard and the readout will be slightly different. This one's been upgraded were, just by flashing the firmware. Let's move up to a different band. So we press the uh, band button. Let's see if we can hear something maybe on, uh, on AM mode. Let's switch to AM. We're on a 5 kilohertz step. I say conditions uh, not brilliant today. Let's go a bit higher in frequency. We have four kilohertz bandwidth here. We can. Uh, Let's hit the bandwidth button, go up to a 6, or we can reduce bandwidth, so we start to get distorted there, so that actually shows the filtering is working, hit back on a 6, go up to uh, 19 meters, let's try, the, let's try 20 meters on meter band. To uh, USB. Mexico zero, Mexico zero, Mexico zero station again. Mexico zero, once again, please. So, so it works perfectly well on uh, on SSB. Works well on AM. Uh, uh, gentlemen, please stand by. Uh, I'm listening only Mexico zero. Mexico Let's see if we can zero, find. Uh, some CW and we'll check the filtering on CW. Just change the steps. Let's try a zero 
2.5 filter quite sharp see if we can hear anything now well, I think the filter is pretty impressive Five bandwidth here. That's the narrowest. The next would be a step up to a one. We'll try it on one. Go back to AM. Let's go up to the 19 meter broadcast band and see if there's anything we can hear here. up a bit. So there you have it, that's the uh, SI4732. You've seen it actually receiving. You've seen what the controls do. For 50 UK pounds it's just about acceptable this if you get a good one and that is to say one that works one that's been properly soldered um, and one where perhaps the encoder doesn't give up after uh, a week or two now they're great fun to experiment with and that's probably what I've spent most of my time with this one doing is updating the firmware on the Arduino some very clever people out there that are constantly writing updates for the firmware which does improve the receiver and that's a lot of fun but what I will say is you can see I've got two of these here and I'll just come out a little bit and for the price of two of these you could get one of these and that is the Balka DX and believe you me it's in a different league the readout, the performance is something else and it's a, a, a finished product. The quality of it is absolutely superb and it's a tiny little portable receiver. So if you're in the market for a portable and you can pay a little bit extra then I'd go for the Belka. If you're in the market for a little portable that you want to experiment and play around with, or maybe you've only got the uh, £50 or $60 or whatever it is to spend, then yeah, you can try one of these. They're great fun to play around with. But they're basically a kit that somebody else has put together. And that's apparent when you start to use them and some of the components that have been used are perhaps not the best because somebody else has built this kit and they've built it obviously down to a price so bearing all that in mind if um, you're interested in these you'll find them very easily on eBay you may find them a little bit cheaper on Aliexpress but it will take a while longer to get to you you also find them on Amazon don't pay more than 50 or absolutely maximum 60 pounds for one of these um, and be prepared that you may have to play around with them to get them working as you want. But very interesting little receiver. Thank you for watching.